All right, hello everybody. Today we're gonna to review order of operations with radicals. If you are taking this for seventh grade advanced, this is your lesson 1.05. If you are taking this for pre-algebra, this is your lesson 1.03. It is the same material, it's just in two different courses. So let's go ahead and get started with radicals. Remember to have your note-taking guide in front of you. You can print this and handwrite on it or you can type on it. Um, and it is important that we write and fill it all out so we cover all the material. I like to start with the vocabulary. Exponent is the number of times the base occurs as a factor. Radical is the symbol that means the root of. So we've used radicals with square roots and cube roots. You could use radicals with other roots, but right now we're just doing square root and cube root. Then we have the order of operations. This is the order that we calculate or compute our work. We start with grouping symbols, then we go to exponents and radicals, then we do multiplying or dividing from left to right, then we'll do adding or subtracting from left to right. Going back to our first page, our objective today is to use the order of operations to solve multi-step math problems and to use the order of operations to solve multi-step real world problems. So let's start with order of operations. You can come into these lessons and drag these assignments around and then submit and check your work. So make sure that you're interacting with this very interactive textbook. Now on your note taking guide, please write down the steps for order of operations. Step one, simplify inside the parentheses, brackets, or absolute value symbols. Step two, simplify terms that have exponents or radicals. Step three, multiply or divide from left to right. And the final step four, add or subtract from left to right. All right, now we have some more practice here. You can go through this and simplify the expressions. We have three minus four times five. So we would start with the multiplication. Four times five is going to come first, not because there's a parentheses around the five, that parentheses is really just telling us four times five. So we would have three, minus 20. Now, if we use our additive inverse, we're going to have three plus, sorry guys, you can't see that very good, three plus negative 20. Remember that additive inverse, we change subtraction to addition, and then we change that second number to its opposite. So instead of three minus positive 20, it's going to be three plus negative 20. Now, because these are different signs, three is positive, 20 is negative, we will subtract the numbers. And then whatever number has the bigger absolute value sign is the number that wins when it comes to the sign. So 20, negative 20 has a bigger absolute value than positive three. So our answer is negative 17. Let's do one more. You guys can come back to this and practice it on your own, but we have four minus 11 to the second power. We have to do four minus 11 first, and that's four plus negative 11, which is negative seven squared. Remember that negative seven was inside a parentheses. So it's negative seven times negative seven, which is positive 49. All right, so those were kind of simple, just kind of getting started questions. Let's look at this important note here. Let's go ahead and solve this. Eight minus 12, the absolute value of eight minus 12 plus one cubed minus four. So we need to add and subtract from left to right. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as addition because that additive inverse really helps us when we're subtracting numbers. 
And anytime I'm working this out, I really just want to write everything down. So we have 8 plus negative 12, which is negative 4. Now I can do negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3. And negative 3 to the third power is negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. Positive 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Now we take the absolute value of negative 27, which makes it a positive 27, and then we subtract four. Now we can do 27 minus four pretty easily, but you could also do the additive inverse and you would still get the same answer. There is a short video. You're more than welcome to come back to page two and watch that video. It's just reviewing the order of operations. Now we have some practice problems. I want you to come here and write these problems in your note-taking guide and solve them. Then click on the check button to see your work, to make sure your work matches what is supposed to be on there. Now we have more with order of operations. Okay, we really haven't done a whole lot yet, but now we're gonna get into it, okay? Simplifying expressions with radicals using the order of operations. So I'm going to go ahead and just give myself some clear space here. We don't want to see all this answers yet. Let's go ahead and work it out. So we have the square root of 49 plus 3 squared divided by 2 inside of parentheses. So I am going to do my parentheses first. 3 squared is 9. Now, my next step, I still need to do my parentheses. 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. Now I can do the square root of 49, which is 7. 7 plus 4.5. Sorry about that, guys. 7 plus 4.5 equals 11.5. Remember, we have to line up our decimal points. So even though it's seven, it's really 7.0. And then the 4.5 is there and we can add it together. Okay, now ooh, we got another one here. Okay, let's go ahead and solve the square root of 25 minus nine over three cubed divided by nine. Now the numerator and the denominator are somewhat in a grouping symbol right now. There's no parentheses for you to see, but we need to simplify the numerator first. We need to simplify the denominator first before we could do anything with that fraction. So let's start with the numerator. The square root of 25 is five, and we have five minus nine. And I'm just gonna stick with that right now. We can change it to five plus negative nine, which gives us negative four. Okay, now we go to the bottom, three cubed. Three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. 27 divided by nine is three. So our final answer is negative four over three. So we simplify the top and we simplify the bottom. We keep them separate. All right, let's do another example. Oh, this one's a long one. Make sure you're writing down the steps. This is not mental math. It doesn't matter how great you are at math, you really need to write it down because it's just a lot of different pieces to remember. So the square root of 36 times three squared minus the absolute value of the cube root of negative 64 divided by one half squared. Okay, so let's follow along with the order of operations.
Okay. The first step is what's inside the parentheses. And there's a grouping symbol inside the parentheses. So we need to figure out the cube root of 64. So what is the cube root of 64? And that is four, but it's this cube root of negative 64. So it's actually going to be, I'm gonna write everything back down. It's gonna be the absolute value of negative four divided by one half squared. So now we still have that grouping symbol. The absolute value of negative four is four divided by 0.5 squared. Now we're gonna go back and do 0.5 squared. All right, now we're gonna do four divided by 0.25. So four divided by a quarter, four divided by 0.25 is 16. Now we can follow our order of operations. We have radicals and exponents, so we're just gonna simplify them from left to right. The square root of 36 is six and three squared is nine. So we have six times nine minus 16. We need to do six times nine first. That gives us 54. I'm gonna come over here. Sorry guys, I ran out of space. And then we can do 54, take away 16 and we get 38. Notice how much I wrote on the screen. It's important to write it all down. Even if you don't think you need to, if you don't get the answer that matches something on the assignment and you have to go back and see what you did wrong, if you don't have anything written down, it's hard to see where you went wrong. So please, please, please get used to writing it down. And here's an important note from FLVS. It may be helpful to write out each step when simplifying longer expressions. It helps you not get confused and it helps you complete the steps in the right order. Okay. So we have another example here. A student simplified the expression two thirds, two over three to the negative second power times the square root of 12 times three and got a final answer of 13.5. Determine if that is correct. So let's go ahead and solve it using the order of operations. It doesn't really matter what he got for the final answer. We need to solve it to see if we get the same thing. So I see two grouping symbols. I see the parentheses around the two thirds and the radical has something happening inside of it, which also implies a grouping symbol. That radical goes all the way over the 12 and the three. So I'm gonna start with that because grouping symbols come before exponents. And I'm gonna simplify 12 times three to make it 36. Now I have exponents and radicals and they can be done at the same step. So I'm going to change my fraction to the reciprocal, I'm gonna write it over here, three over two to the positive second power times the square root of 36. Now I'm running out of space, but you could keep going down in your, on your paper, we have three over two squared times the square root of 36. Remember your negative exponent rules. We use the reciprocal and change the exponent to positive. Now we can do three squared over two squared and we get nine over four times the square root of 36, which is six. And we could do that over one. So we have nine times six is 54 and four times one, which is four. Now we can simplify 54 divided by four 
and we get 13.5. So we found the same answer that the student found. All right, page five has two more practice problems on it. Please challenge yourself to solve these problems and check to see if you got them correct. Practicing only helps if we're practicing it correctly. Now we've got some real world examples here. Ooh, we've got 30 pieces of candy to share with friends at school. Three friends ask for two pieces of candy and another friend asks for four. One of your friends changed their mind and gave two pieces of candy back. How many pieces of candy are left? Create an expression to help you answer the question. So let's go ahead and make some space. And let's go ahead and write out our equation. So we have 30 pieces of candy. We subtract three times two because three friends ask for two pieces of candy each. Another friend asked for four pieces. And then another friend decided to give two pieces back. So we took away three times two, we took away four, and we added two back into it. So we can simplify 30 minus six is the same as 30 plus negative six plus negative four plus two. So 30 plus negative six is 24 plus negative four is 20, and 20 plus two is 22 pieces of candy. All right, and we could click on these to help us figure out the problem and then work it back out. All right, now we have a speeding ticket. Let me work on some clean space here. There we go. A speeding ticket costs $150 plus $19 for each mile per hour over the speed limit. Write and simplify an expression to determine the amount of money a ticket would be for going 15 miles per hour over the speed limit. So it's automatically gonna cost $150 but then it's also going to cost $19 for every mile per hour over, and they went 15 miles per hour over. So we're going to do 19 times 15. So we, we have the automatic 150 plus another 285, and we get a final bill, a final speeding ticket of $435. Okay, so it, we can go back, we can click on these fast and it'll break it down for us so that we can see how to solve it. So these are really, really great for helping us check for understanding. Math takes practice but we have to practice it correctly or we're really not getting that practice that we need. Okay, all five friends ordered a main item and a drink. Two friends ordered dessert. The total bill was split, split evenly among the five friends. Create an expression to represent the problem. There's more than one correct way to write the expression. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're always, that you're wrong just because you don't match what I'm gonna pick. So all five friends ordered a main drink, a main item and a drink. Okay, so we have five people that ordered a main item and a drink. Two friends also ordered dessert. Okay, so if we work that out, we could guess and check. We could say three people picked the combo meal. Two people picked the enchiladas. We could say that one person picked the combo meal. Two people picked the enchiladas and one or two people picked the chimichanga. You're guessing and checking because they didn't give us enough information in this paragraph 
to tell us what they actually ordered. Okay, now we know that they also ordered five drinks, but we don't know if they ordered five sodas or four sodas in one lemonade or four lemonades in one soda. We could really break it up so many different ways. The only thing that we do know is that two people ordered dessert and there's only one dessert, fried ice cream, which sounds pretty delicious. So we can really make up our equation, our expression, as long as what we're adding up is only five main meals, five main sodas, and two desserts. Then once you add that all together, you're gonna divide it by five, and here they wrote it as a fraction, but it's still dividing by five. So one of the example solution answers could be 14.44, but it could be something totally different. And that's okay because it just depends on how many combo meals, how many enchiladas, and how many chimichangas the five people ordered. So for practice, your last page of practice, there are five slides. Please go through each one of them, answer the question, and then click next to make sure that you fully understand all the information. All right, guys, have a great day. Make sure you work on your assignment and have, have fun.